things in the precious name of Jesus. Welcome to Bethel Christian Worship Center. We're so elated to have you with us today, and we hope your hearts and minds are ready to receive a word from our pastor, Pastor Curtis A. Nunn Sr., because he has a word for you. is worth this is the day that the Lord has made. As the psalmist said, I will rejoice and be glad therein. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We want to uh, give a uh, welcome to uh, those that are joining us by uh, via our live stream, either uh, you're live or you're catching us on uh, our recorded. And we just want to give a shout out and welcome to you for joining us in our Sunday morning worship. And uh, I tell you, we've had a spirited time of worship. Amen. Here at Bethel. My name is Pastor Curtis A. Nunn, Sr. I'm the pastor of the Bethel Christian Worship Center Church, 437 North 9th Street in East St. Louis, Illinois. And I uh, want to welcome you. And uh, we uh, are going to not delay uh, the time, but uh, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. And uh, remembering those that are on our prayer list on today, let's look away to God. Heavenly Father, uh, I believe you choose your listeners very carefully. Yeah. And we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for uh, waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, with the activity of our limbs. I want to thank you that it is in you that we live, that we move and have our being. Thank you for life and that more abundantly. And Lord God, right now, we, we, we lift up those that are on our prayer list right now. And uh, we ask that uh, you would look upon them. We uh, lift up Sister Veronica Ware to you right now. Yeah. And uh, we ask God that you would touch and minister to both her uh, and Sister Beatrice right now. Yeah. Uh, Lord God, you see the needs and uh, doctors are doing what they uh, have prescribed and, and, and what have you. But you made the body. Yeah. Know every organ and every part. Oh God, let your healing virtue flow yes, right now. Yes, and uh, give them deliverance and relief right now. Yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We ask that you look on those in hospital rooms and places of confinement. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are recuperating and recovering. We thank you, Lord, for uh, those that, uh, 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 that that you're ministering to, and, and, and we lift them up. We continue to lift up Elder Pritchett uh, in Miami, Florida. We thank you, Lord God, that, uh, for the good reports that we get when uh, we get a chance to talk. Thank you for hearing and answering prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would look upon bereaved families right now. Oh God, there's somebody that uh, is going through uh, the various stages of grief right now. Be a very present help. Yes. Oh God, minister to them. Yes. Uh, meet the needs that are in their lives. And Father, we lift up those that uh, due to the, uh, the flood situation, uh, those that have suffered loss, uh, loss of property, uh, been displaced, God, those that uh, lives were lost, family members possibly were lost. And there's some, Lord, that uh, they're wondering what are they going to do? Oh, God. Lord, we thank you and uh, we intercede on their behalf. And we ask, oh, God, to uh, comfort them as only you can. Uh, give them to know that things can be replaced. And God, we ask that you would move in uh, uh, with favor yes, in their behalf. Yes, move with favor in their behalf, oh God. Yes, and, and, and do a work of restoration in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And then, Lord, we believe that you choose the listeners very carefully. And uh, I believe in my faith that our listeners are going to be good ground for the word that's going to be delivered here on today. God, help me to uh, share and communicate what you would have me share. Cause your work to go forth, oh God, and to bring and to produce kingdom fruit in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We thank you for it now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And 
uh, we give a shout out to uh, our members that uh, are unable to be with us. Amen. I want you to know we haven't forgotten about you. And uh, we are praying, amen, for you. And uh, we trust that you are doing the same for us. We always like to uh, identify who we are, amen. This is Bethel Christian Worship Center. Our purpose is to bring people to Jesus Christ. Membership in his family, develop them to Christ-like maturity, and equip them for their ministry in the church, life mission in the world, in order to magnify God's name. And our focus at Bethel is to connect, to engage, to equip, and to employ. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And uh, amen. for those of you that are and uh, are regularly following this ministry, and uh, if it's being a blessing to you, uh, we ask that you would reach out. Uh, we encourage uh, 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 comments and uh, uh, praise reports and that kind of thing. And so uh, if this ministry, if this word is being a blessing to you, amen, uh, we encourage you to reach out and uh, to let us know. And uh, we're going to get right to the word of the Lord on today. And we will be in the book of Psalms. We're going to look at, amen, the 11th division of the book of Psalms. And uh, translation that we're going to use, and I'm doing it for uh, uh, a purpose on today. We're going to be using the English Standard Version. Uh, might have other translations and it will read similarly, uh, but there's a, there, there's, a, there's a key point that I think the ESV brings out a little bit better than uh, some of the other translations that we normally use. This is 11 Psalms, and it begins reading, it says, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird? To your mouth. For behold, the wicked bend the bow, and they have fitted their arrows to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord strong is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the ones who love, uh, the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked, fire and sulfur, and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. I want to thank God for the uh, hearing and the reading of his word from this 11th Psalms on today. And from the text, uh, from the text, this uh, Psalms 11, uh, I like to say that Psalms 11 contains faith response to fear's counsel. In other words, when things get rough, when things are shaky, when things are going bad, somebody say, Pastor, you're talking about my life. <laughs> uh, in that verse of scripture, uh, going back to the third verse there in Psalms 11. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's a verse I quote many times in prayer. And when I quote it, I talk about the fact that if the foundations are shaken or as the text says, destroy. There's some things that when you shake them bad enough, you tear them up. Yeah. And we have been living during uh, a time 
that there's a whole lot of shame that's going on. Living in a time where, and, and, and uh, you know, we just recently had uh, the, 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 the heavens open up and a deluge of rain. And uh, the weather forecaster said that uh, they had, it, it was a record setting in our area, record setting. Uh, I heard one report that they hadn't seen rain like this in over 100 years. I heard another report in another area that said 1,000 years. Record setting. And that rain came uh, right before we had been going through some record setting heat in our area. There's a lot of shaking going on. And we are in the midst of still of the uh, COVID situation and the pandemic associated with it. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if anybody saw it, but uh, you know, the President of the United States, President Biden, had come down with it. And, uh, and then five days they say he was all right, and now they say he's tested again. But, but we've been dealing with the impacts of, 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 of this global, not, not global pandemic for over two years or so. Yeah. And we need to recognize and there are a lot of things that have been affected by this pandemic. And now, before we can get completely out of that, I'm hearing about the possibility of another one called monkeypox. Yeah. That the World Health Organization is beginning to uh, see it on the increase. That, that stuff coming up and, 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 and the not saying the only ones that are being affected by it, but the population is being affected by it for a large part by gay men. Now it can affect others, but, but predominantly uh, at this point, it seems like that it's being transmitted among gay men in the city of San Francisco. Mary came out, I saw her in the news uh, report on last week about uh, it's becoming problematic in the city of San Francisco. There's a lot of shaking that's going on. And when or, amen, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So my subject on today, well, this message is the question, what can the righteous do? What are we to do? In the midst of this psalm, there is what seemingly is a disparate question. Overwhelmed. It looked like you can't finish something and something else starts up. Yes. It's almost like Job where one uh, servant came and said uh, a wind struck and all your children are dead. Another one before you could get through talking, another one was at the door. All your cattle are gone. And before he amen, uh, could finish, another one is at the door. What can the righteous do? What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. 
anxiety, stress, is at all time levels. It gets to the point sometimes where you just have to turn the news off. Take a break. What can the righteous do? Well, I believe that David can help us in this 11th Psalm. And, uh, you know, many of the uh, commentators, they like to try to figure out what was going on in David's life when he wrote this psalm. And there's some that speculate, well, it was during the time or during the time when uh, Saul was still king and was pursuing David and uh, making his life miserable. Because Saul recognized that David was the anointed or, you know, the enemy was just using him to try to attack him. He thought he was a threat to him. And so there, there, there are individuals that think, well, maybe this was the time when David wrote this psalm. There are others that think that, no, this psalm might have been written during the time when David was king. And his son Absalom uh, later revolted and uh, was trying to uh, kill David to take over his throne. I believe the commentators both were wrong uh, about it because in both of those instances, when Saul was after David, David did flee and hid in the mountains and in the caves. Also, when Absalom uh, led the revolt and was against him, again, David at that time fled uh, from his own son. So we've come to the conclusion that we don't really know what was happening in David's life when he wrote this 11th Psalm. But one of the things that we did notice him say was that the advice that he was getting from his friends was you need to run. You need to flee to the mountains. But in the text, you'll notice that David makes the declaration from the very beginning. In the Lord, I take refuge. Yeah. Come on. In the Lord, I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mouth? David said, I ain't running. I'm not running. His friends reply back, but the wicked have bent their bowls and they fitted their arrows on the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. In other words, amen, they got their weapons drawn yeah. and they're hiding in the shadows uh -huh. to try to shoot down the righteous. Yeah. Yeah. And if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Hallelujah. What can the righteous do? There, there, there's some gems. This psalm is only seven verses. And I read it to you already. And uh, there's something about the word of God. There's some gems that are hidden in the word of God, but you got to dig for them. And I believe that in this 11th Psalm, David can teach us something, and I'm going to share uh, with you uh, what he teaches. Amen. Uh, number one, David uh, didn't ignore the problem. David looked around at the wicked. He knew what the situation was. He knew that maybe he couldn't see, but he knew that there were folk, amen, scheming and hiding and 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 uh, uh, with uh, weapons trained at him. So number one, and this is what I'm going to talk about as we unpack this 11th Psalm. David looked around and he saw what the wicked were doing. The second thing David did after he looked and saw what the wicked were doing, 
David looked up to God. I see what they're doing. But he changed his view. He changed his look. Amen. You know what? Sometimes you can you you can you can be fixated on what the wicked is doing, and it will make you sick. It will depress you. Amen. And what the wicked is doing. Amen. The Bible say watch as well as pray. So we got to have our eyes open. And we need to stay informed. Amen. But 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 you gotta you gotta know your limit, and after you see what the wicked is doing, you need to turn your attention and look up to God. Amen. The third thing that David did after he looked up to God, and I'm going to talk about each one of those, Amen, and uh, expand on them. The third thing David did was he then looked ahead to the future. He looked ahead to the future. Sometimes the question is, what can the righteous do? Things will get so bad until the enemy will try to make us think we don't have any futures. Yeah. Or we don't have a viable future. And get us to give up and succumb to the enemy's attack. Yeah. So David looked around at the wicked, he looked up to God. And then he looked ahead to the future. What shall the righteous do? He looked around. And one of the things that uh, he understood and knew is that God observes all that people do. There's a lot of things going on. But I'm here to tell you, God's not asleep. Y'all hear me? Amen. I say, God's not asleep. And God sees it all. There's nothing that's going to catch him by surprise. And uh, so God observes all that people do. In fact, the scriptures tell us uh, over in Proverbs 15, uh, Proverbs 15 and 3, says the eyes of the Lord are in every place keeping watch on the evil and the good God observes all that people do now I talked about the fact that David looked up and in that verse in that 11th chapter of uh, the Psalms, and I'm going to go back to it again. David said, I take refuge, uh, in the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountains? The wicked uh, got their bows bent, they're getting ready to shoot out of the shadows at me. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The next statement that's made there, verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. That statement right there. And, and, and as I said, I quote it sometimes when I'm praying and I'll say, Lord, when, you know, when the foundations are shaken, what shall the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. And I don't know if your mind works like my mind. I, you know, probably, probably better. There's some, there's some thoughts I have sometimes, and and you know, the Bible says it's a way that seems right to a man. But I'll tell you, when 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 I think about the fact that there's a lot of shaking going on, and the question is asked: If the foundations be shaken or destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And then when the answer says, Well, the Lord is in His holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. I don't know, and, 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 and I was wrong for thinking like this, but I'm just day here my mind went. Uh, that's good. But the trouble I'm having is down here. Okay, I know he's in heaven. And his throne is in heaven. But I need help down here. Anybody think like, I 
He examines the upright. He tests them. And, that's, and, and that same word is used uh, about the wicked as well. His eyelids, you know, his, his eyes behold. And his eyelids try. Some people, when they look at that, they think, okay, God is examining the righteous. And uh, they think that it means that uh, he's putting us through a refining process. And uh, we're going through the fire. And just like uh, uh, a precious metal, when it's refined, it goes through the fire. And the fire uh, causes the impurities to come to the top. Yeah. Where uh, the refiner can scoop off the impurities and the, what's called the dross. And uh, I heard it stated that when the refiner can see his reflection clearly, he knows that all of the, the impurities are gone because he can see himself wow. in the molten fire. Yeah. So there are people that say, well, amen, and, and they take it twofold. Amen. A lot of times God is allowing us to go through what we're going through. Amen. Because it is doing a good work in us. Oh, yeah. Amen. It is doing a good work. It is. Amen. There, there, there are some things that it takes the fires of trials. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. To release out of our lives. And, 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 and God, amen, he's not going to put you, uh, keep you in the fire any longer than you need to be in the fire. And, and, and he's scooping out the impurities. Yeah. And when he sees a clear reflection of himself, they're ready. Yeah. Yeah. They're ready now. Now, there's another usage of that word test. And it means to check. To examine. And uh, the thought there is that God is checking us and verifying that we are who we say we are. Amen. He's checking off. Amen. He's examining the upright. Amen. The wicked are acting up. Amen. Our world is shaking. Uh, uh, folk are losing it. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. Amen. But there are some things that will not be shaken. And God is looking down and he's saying, have you, have, have you uh, considered my servant Job? None like him. God is looking for those he can brag on. Hallelujah. What can the righteous do? He examines the upright. Amen. He examines the upright. Not only does he examine the upright, but God prepares his judgment for the wicked. Remember I told you, he sees. And uh, there's a saying in the world, you might get back, but you ain't getting away. There is going to be a settling of accounts. Yeah. And there are folks that have done stuff and they thought they got away with it. And there are people right now who act with seeming impunity with the way they act. And they don't realize God is watching. God is watching. And there is going to be a day a day, as she said, of reckoning, a day of judgment. Yeah. And God is, he prepares his judgments for the wicked. He prepares his judgment for the wicked. What shall the righteous do? Hold tight. Right. Be patient. Yeah. Amen. Uh, may not come when you want him, but he's going to be right on time. He's preparing his judgments for the wicked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, when I think about that, and what David had in mind, David was thinking about Solomon and Gamal. You notice in the text where he talks about he's going to rain down 
uh, fire, mm -hmm. uh, fiery coals and sulfur. It brought to David's mind the judgment that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was reminiscent to David, and David is saying, their day is coming. God, 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 their day is coming. Or it might be prolonged. It might seem like, uh, uh, but God is not uh, slack. As some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering, desiring that as many as can be saved. Hallelujah. He's preparing. He's preparing. His judgments for the wicked. What can the righteous do? Yeah. Here's where the gem, this is one of the gems that I found in this Psalms. Uh, but David said, uh, my sanctuary is in God. I'm not running. I'm not fleeing. He saw what the wicked was doing. He looked up to God. And he recognized that this is just a test. There's some things that some of us are having to deal with. And we need to recognize this is just a test. Mm -hmm. yeah. These old heavy burdens shall not last. There's going to be a bright day. This is just a test. And there's some tests that you can't get through until you pass the test. So we just as well make up our mind. We pass this test. Yeah. I'm going to pass this test. Yeah. And then I said there's a gem that's hidden in here, and you got to dig for it to see it. And uh, the thing that will help answer the question, when the foundations are destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And I alluded to it before, the enemy will try to make us think that we have no future. He'll try to make you think that this is as good as it gets. And if anything, this won't last very long. It's going to get worse. You think you got trouble now? Just wait a few minutes. It's going to get worse. And, and, and when our, our, our uh, hope, when we have no hope for a future, it, it, it saps the joy out of living. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And the enemy likes to play like that. He likes to play that over and over in our mind that we have no future. But David helps us in the text. Amen. And, and, and David talks about the destiny Somebody say destiny. destiny. You got to remember what, what did God say about your life? What did God promise you? Amen. When Sandra was uh, speaking earlier prophetically, amen, it, it was a word that uh, she was using, and I believe it was, was it manifest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Manifest. Yeah, yeah. God said, I'm going to, amen, in this season, I'm going to begin to manifest. Yeah. Oh, say that word with me. Manifest it, Lord. I believe you are. Manifest it.
A lot of times the enemy wants us to lump ourselves in with the wicked, and just because the wicked is going down, they don't mean that the saints are going down. When the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, and the plagues came on Egypt, where the children of Israel were in Goshen, he passed over. God made a difference between Egypt and Israel. And I'm here to tell you, God can make a difference between his, between his people and what the world is having to experience. But you got to remember what I said. You got to look up. Amen. You got to take your petition and complaint. Amen. You got to take it to a higher court. Yes. My God. Amen. You got to take it to a higher court. Yes. yes. Amen. Where you got a mediator. Yes. Well, I tell you, you, you know, I'm, I'm getting an understanding about what it means to be a mediator. Yes. Thank God for having a mediator. Yes. Amen. Folk will do some illegal stuff. Amen. And I have you packing up. Amen. Uh, and, and what have you, uh, 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 when, when, when what they're doing is not right, but thank God when we got a meeting. Hey! 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 about the judgment on the wicked. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. Then in the last verse, in verse 7, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. It's right there. Say that with me. The upright, the upright shall behold, shall behold, behold his, face. his face. Hallelujah. It's right there. There's a gem that's hidden in there. And, and the gem that's hidden in there is that Moses, when he was leading the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt, and Moses was uh, known, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, as a man who, who, who uh, he was so with God that he, he, he was up in the mountain uh, with the friends of God that when he came back down, the glory of God shone in his face yes. to the point that he had to put a veil yes. over his face because the people couldn't uh, look on him. Because he had spent so much time with God. And Moses, at one point, asked God, he said, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see your face. 
And God replied to Moses, I can't show you my face. If I show you my face, you won't live. But this is what God said I'll do. Uh, and and uh, I've got the, the, the text there. God said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of a rock. There's an opening in the rocks. And I'm going to put you there. And I'm going to put my hand over the opening. And I'm going to pass by. But I got my hand covering you. And after I pass by my face, I'm going to remove my hand. And you're going to see my back. The, the, my back. That's what we have there, Exodus 33 and 22. So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of a rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. God said, you can't see my face. Can't see my face. You won't live. But notice what David says in the 11th. So I told him he was prophetic. David says, he beholds the upright. In other words, the upright will see his face. And in the Old Testament, Believers in the Old Testament, their uh, understanding of, of, of what it meant uh, to be delivered and to go to heaven and, and, and to be in the presence of God, they, they, they didn't have a full uh, understanding like we do now with the New Testament. But one of the ways that they expressed it was to see his face. Was to see his face. To be in his presence. That was their ultimate vindication. That was their, that, that was their future hope. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. That was their ultimate. That, that, that was how they summed up uh, uh, everything is going to be all right. I got a future. Amen. When I see his face, I'm in his favor. When, when I see his face, I'll be where I need to be. When I see his face. And you know, it made me think back. When I first started preaching, I was so nervous that when I first started preaching, I started preaching, I had my eyes closed. It's back at Old Bell. And I get up and I start preaching. I had my eyes closed. Up and uh, my pastor then, Pastor Henry Phillips Sr., uh, he was a great help to me. And he looked and he saw what I was doing. And he pulled me aside. He said, you got to open your eyes. You, 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 you can't preach with your eyes closed. He said, you'll be preaching and the house will be empty and you won't even know it. <laughs> And so he told me, he said, you, you, you got to open your eyes, you got to open your eyes. And so uh, I opened my eyes. But then after I opened my eyes, what I would do, and that was my mom was living, member of the church, and when I would preach, I would look directly at her. I watched her face while I was preaching. I felt like that was a safe space. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and I preached looking right at her. And I had to eventually get to the point to where, all right, now you need to, you know. But that was a safety yeah. for me at the time. Do you all know, amen, uh, for a baby, after you have bonded and what have you, amen, uh, they, they, they can see a lot of other, a lot of other people can say a lot of different things, but it's nothing like their mother's face. Right. Yeah. Nothing like their mother's face. Hallelujah. People talk about, you know, when I get to heaven, I want to 
uh, see John, or when I get there, I want to talk to Jonah, or when I get there, I want to, you know, they got different ones that they say they want to see. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. I want to see Jesus. Man, that's some other folk, but they, they can wait. <laughs> but the first face I want to see is Jesus. And so what David expresses in just a few short words in that 11th Psalm, and that second verse, David expresses that I see what's going on. And I know there are enemies that are hiding in the dark to shoot at me. And they think that they're not seen. But, amen, God sees in the dark. And he's my refuge. And he's my strength. And in many instances, the same weapons that they got aimed at me, they're going to end up, and it's going to reverse on them. You all remember when the, when the uh, 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 wayward uh, prophet, they tried to uh, buy him, uh, pay him the curse, Israel. Yeah, tried to pay him to curse Israel. And he took the money and he went out there and couldn't curse him. Had to bless him. I'm here to tell you, amen, and uh, Sister Ida made mention of it, amen, he'll sit, he'll, he'll give you a seat at the table in the presence of your enemies, and he'll make them have to pass you. And you know what? When, when you can sit at the table in the presence of your enemies and be at perfect peace, God is at the table. Yeah. Ah, they're good. Can you pass me some of those potatoes? <laughs> pass that corn. You gonna eat? Yeah, I'm gonna eat. Amen. God invited me to this table. And, and, and God had them there so they can watch me eat and recognize that there's not a thing they can do. Hallelujah. Want to see his face? He said, I see the righteous will behold him. And that he will behold the righteous. And, and, and David uh, prophesied about it. And in conclusion, 1 John 3 and 2. God had to tell Moses, you can't do it. And, 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 and you all, you remember what I said about Moses. Moses in the presence of God saw until the presence of God, it, it reflected off his face. And something that Moses could not do, John, 1 John 3 and 2 said, Beloved, now we are the children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. In other words, we're still in the process. He's not finished with us yet. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know. Can somebody say that with me? We know. We know. We know. One more time. We know. We know. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We're going to see him face to face. We've got a future. Hallelujah. We've got a future. We've got a destiny. Praise his name. And the reason we'll be able to do it is because we'll have glorified bodies. And we'll be able to see him as he is. So when the foundations are shaken, what shall the righteous do? 
Oh yeah, we see what's going on. We're taking it to a high court. Yeah. We're taking it to a holy court. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. 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 And making sure we are who we say we are. Yeah. Amen. And the things we're going through, amen. Uh, these old heavy burdens shall not last. There is going to be a brighter day. God says, I see myself in them. They're red. Hallelujah. And, and you know, when, when the refiner looks down and sees himself, amen, that, that, that is reminiscent of us seeing him too. Oh my God. I trust, I, I, I hope that uh, this word was an encouragement. Amen. Uh, I know many are going through some different things right now, but uh, amen. God is getting ready to manifest. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a man to lie to the Son of Man to repent when he speaks a thing, he brings it to pass. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to pray. Uh, let's look away to God. Lord God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for what you've given me to share with your people. And I thank you, oh God, for an encouraging word. I thank you, O oh God, for uh, knowing that you got it under control and that we are safe in your arms. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Thank you, Lord, for keeping your people in the safety zone. Thank you, Lord, for watching over your word to perform it. Thank you, Lord, for manifestations taking place. And we uh, shall give you the glory and we shall give you the praise for the things that you've done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So close out our live stream audience. Amen. If this word, if this ministry is uh, being a blessing to you and the Lord puts it upon your heart, share a testimony with us. Amen. Share a praise report on how uh, we're, uh, through the word of God, making an impact in your life. And if the Lord would desire that you give a gift, uh, not that we desire a gift, but that fruit may abound to your account, uh, they're going to put on the four ways that you can. Uh, well, I don't know if she'll be able to do that. Okay, she'll put on the four ways that you can give to be a blessing uh, to Bethel Ministry. And uh, uh, God bless and have a great week as we close out our live stream audience. Amen. To those that are here, we're going to get ready.